going to start off this morning with some uh, I.O. pressuring of the system and take a look at some I.O. questions that we've had. By the way, during uh, this morning, I uh, updated. You should be able to see my desktop now. If you had any questions on getting this, I can send you an email again, but in my home directory on the uh, web, I've got the recordings for each of the days. I'll have today's done sometime, you know, this evening for me. I did not plan on burning these to DVD and send them. If you want them, uh, download them. Okay. We just go through and see what uh, is happening. I'm gonna walk through the systems real quick. So let's. This was a 32. Let's start off again with topology. 32 CPUs, 128 gig of memory, two disk drives. Two disk drives are mounted for root and then scratch, and then we do have some uh, NFS mounted home directories, including right now DMZ server. So let's just start off. I don't know what's going on with the machine, but everything is healthy there. No memory being used. And nothing's going on with disk. This looks like an idle system. Don't see anything running. We still could have some issues going on. Number one, I still got that zombie happening. I suspect that zombie won't go away without a reboot, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. See, for memory, there was 128 gig, only 700 meg used. 300 meg in the cache, 29 meg for buffers. Nothing out on swap. It's cat slash proc mem info. So 260 meg that's for the cached field. Nothing in shamam. Slab, uh, 110 meg, real small slab right now as well. So everything's looking quiet there. CPU memory disk, file system, let's just do a slab top dash S space C. NFS inode cache. Also some directory entries and other miscellaneous stuff in there. Buffers. I'm going to do something here, LSOF. Short dash R B N dash K seven pipe into more. I don't expect to see anything fancy. PBS has got some file open here. Let's quit out of there. CPU memory disk file system buffer cache shemem. Let's do an LS dash L on dev shemem. Nothing in there. And also IPCS dash AM. And nothing really bad there. What do we got here? 39 meg shared memory segment for PBS. Okay, everything's quiet there. I'll do a couple further things here. Those were all health of the system metrics. I'd like to see what I have for quality of service metrics. So let me do a uh, first of all SPV. See if we ever got that working on this machine. It is indicating got SAR, PCP, and PBS data. Let's just see what I got here. Uh, because it's the first, 
my data has wrapped around. The SPD is working on a uh, day of the month type of scheme here. And now that I'm on uh, March 1st, we're starting to collect data at the beginning of the chart. So that kind of makes a big hole in the data that I'm looking at here. I'm just going to drill down. I see a little bit of uh, high await time in here, a little bit of system time. Didn't actually uh, tie up the CPUs busy for very long here. Very little CPU utilization. <coughs> user time, we did start getting user time a little bit higher yesterday, but not really pegged it. I await time. Typically, we were less than 5% I await. There was a point where we got to 20% I await. System time. Now, we were nailing system time, but this is a 10-minute average. And even though we might have been seeing 70 or 80% system time, when you average it out across a 10-minute window, the, the spikes, the peaks kind of come down. They get averaged out or smoothed out. But I am seeing uh, 30 40% system time here, 35% system time there. And nothing under nice, okay. You see what memory, uh, Q lengths, SAR dash Q. So I have had high uh, run Q lengths. Again, some of that was due to the code fives that we're running. Process table size is typically five to 600. Run Q size. This is divided by the number of CPUs on the system. So I typically did not have too big a run queue size. Again, the run queue was not counting the load level that included the IO8 and the metadata IO8 that we were seeing. I should probably drive up that load level a little bit today with uh, CPU work instead of IO work. And total run queue length getting up to about 40 process on run queue on a 32 CPU system, that's not too bad. But on big systems, we try to keep the run level less than the number of CPUs on the system, which basically means one process per CPU, locked down, pinned, leave it alone. Context switches. We were getting a storm of context switches yesterday, uh, even to today. Let's see here. So there was something that fired off, I don't know, a little while ago. What is that? Uh, six in the morning for Egan time, not too long ago. Actually, let me go back into that. I'm kind of interested more in the noise down here. The reality, I'm typically getting uh, peaks of maybe 15,000 contact switches per second, but there was one storm there where I had quite a bit of contact switches. What do we have here? 85,000 contact switches per second. Forks per second, I don't really care about just seeing where it is. Interrupts. <clears throat> we did have some sort of interrupt storm. Uh, I'm not trusting this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not trusting this data right now. The day isn't showing right. Let's see what we got down here in the noise. Again, this tool has a problem here. It's uh, not picking up the pen and wrapping back around. So I still typically have about 8,000 interrupts per second. See what we've got for memory. So in general, this machine has not had any memory pressure situations. We do get the cache quite large at points. Again, the cache contained everything, including shared memory. SAR is not going to be able to break out any of that. Memory's been free most of the time. Again, here's the usage. We are getting up to 100% busy on the memory utilization. Here it is in percentage. Let's see what we got here. Almost 199 point whatever percent memory utilization.
Okay, we do have uh, something that I have not talked about, which is related to trims, Sardash R. Let me do something here. Sardash R. <laughs> so these have to do with uh, trims. These are pages being freed. Let's do a man on SAR here. <coughs> Number of pages freed per second. A negative value says the number of pages, let's see. A negative value says we're trimming. Note that the page is 4K byte in size. That's not true anymore because we're getting into uh, two megabyte transparent huge pages as well. Number of uh, the buff page E is the number of buffers used by the system. Again, a negative value means that uh, we're trimming. The third one, number of memory pages cached by the system. Negative value again means we're trimming the cache. So we are seeing some uh, freeze and some allocates going on here, these being the freeze, these being the allocates. Uh, let's look at the trims themselves. So here are my page faults. We have, these are the minor page faults, meaning that we did not find a physical address on the processor and had to take an exception to the kernel, go to the page table and either allocate the page get the address and memory where the page is, or initiate a swap in for the page. Now you're always going to have page faults, that's normal. But you want to be efficient in the page faults. I'm just kind of drilling down in here. I did get into major page faults as well. So I'll leave that up there. Every program has to take a minor page fault no matter what. But we'd like to reduce those minor page faults. Again, they were also known as a TLB miss. See what I got for swapping activity. So I can see some swap activity here. I was kind of interested in correlating this. I've got some uh, major page faults here, 2720. Looks like right in here. Let me zoom down in here. So 2720, we can see a swap out event here. Swap out and swap in. That event right here, the middle one, correlates to the page faults I'm seeing here. Uh, so we just looked at swapping. Let's look at cache IO. Sardash B, we haven't talked about much, but this is showing me the physical blocks move, be read, be write. So this is the I.O. that's going on. And we have the number of I.O. operations, total transactions per second, number of writes, number of reads. I've seen one event here that looks like nothing but reads. Then average down in here, looking at about 400 transactions per second as a typical high. Again, what I'm trying to do is just see where the numbers typically are with as much data that I can get. In this case, I've got about a week's worth of data now. I'll try TCP. So now I'm plotting the PCP data again. Uh, looks like I'm only looking at today's data. Let me do something here. going to look at last week's data, or I should say last month's data. Let's take a look at PCP now. Oops. On. Um. 
So this is plotting the PCP data that's coming out of the archive. This kind of gives me the big picture. And then I can go back through and drill down into it with PM chart. I'm just looking here. Pretty low CPU utilization. We did get to about 100%. I am able to see some of my nice that was happening in there. This would be the cron events. Let me zoom into that area. Uh, Trying to get a timestamp here. Looks like they're just before noon that these events are running. Normally, I'm not going to want a cron event fired off at noon in the middle of my day, so I'm not sure why that's uh, happening at that particular time of day. System time. I did get up to 38% uh, as an average. I didn't really look at the time interval on this. Let me just check here. I'm checking to see which one it's using. It's using config.sys here. Do more on config.sys. And it's a five-minute window that it's doing versus SAR that was a 10-minute average. So I was hoping to see a better spike, better peak with a finer, shorter interval, finer grain sample interval for the PCP data. And some IO weight getting up to about 8% IO weight. And what I'm really interested in here is the uh, memory. I want to see what dirty right back NFS unstable look like. And it actually looks like I'm not plotting it. I'm just plotting the basic stuff. I should probably go back in. I'm not going to worry about that. What do we got here? I'm just going to ignore that. I should probably go back into SPV and add a plot that will uh, plot just the dirty right back NFS unstable. Let's see what else I have here. What we got under VM stat? I want to look at page scans. And page scans mean I ran out of memory on a node, and KSwapD came in and started looking for pages. Mostly I'm seeing we had a large slab, so I'm seeing a lot of uh, slabs being scanned here. And then steals, meaning that I actually did steal a page. You can scan and not steal. So I'm seeing steals, but we're not really seeing uh, slab stolen, which I would have expected to see more. I'm just drilling down to see if there's anything in this data. Oh, if I'm, I was looking to see if there's a green in there. Not sure what I have under miscellaneous right now. Let me see that one. Page rotations. Let's see here. On the 27th, maybe 4 in the morning. I'm just trying to figure out the time here. That's 6 in the morning right there. Maybe that's 5 in the morning. Looks like about 5 in the morning. Now, page rotation is basically uh, deactivating a page, putting it on the least recently used list and aging it. Let's 
see if there's anything else of interest to me. XFS, we did have a lot of XFS activity. Let's take a look at uh, directory information. Now, for the XFS statistics, it puts all XFS file systems together into one statistic. If you don't have XFS, you won't have the uh, statistics for it. Uh, I didn't like it. Let's see what else I can get out of it. It's just giving me a file size of zero, so. Looks like I don't have any data in there. Let me just try one more here. Okay, for whatever reason, I'm not going to dig into it, but it's just coming up with a zero file size. Here we can see number of directories that were being held in memory in the slab, getting up to about uh, 4 million directories and uh, 4 million inodes too. Looks like number of open files didn't collect anything. Looks at, oh, there's something in there. We do have some data in here getting up to 50,000 files. Let me get out of there. I wonder if I had file system space, disk space. Let's see what that's showing me. So I'm trying to get a baseline reference to where my numbers typically are to get a feel for CPU memory and I.O. Again, this machine hasn't been uh, as busy as one would like. I haven't really used SDA4, SDB. I'm not counting inos here. Here's my root disk, and I was getting root disk filled up uh, 70, 80 percent. Oh, this is in megabytes. Let's move on. Okay. Just curious if there's any NFS statistics here. Something went wrong, it didn't give me anything. Okay, let me jump to uh, EBS. I'm not paying attention to this pie chart, that's not working right now. Here I can start to see my jobs. Oh, not a whole lot, we got about 80 jobs here. Now, the unit over here is in uh, minutes. Let me go to, uh, I, I think that's good enough, actually. So I'm just trying to get a range here. Some of them were in the 20-minute range. Most of them come in in under 10 minutes. Let's see with the CPU memory. Now, here we can see some things. We've got... This axis is the memory, this is the CPU. I've got an outlier here and an outlier here. Let's zoom into this area down in here. And you can start to see some groupings or some clustering. So we've got one, two, three, four, five classes or groups, clusters of uh, jobs. One there, one there, one here, one here, and one up there. See if they 
got for uh, wall clock plus Q wait time. Again, these aren't too bad either, all less than an hour. There were a couple here that were in the 200 minute range. But most of them are coming back in the 20 minute range again. Let's see what they had for Q wait times. You can actually see where jobs got stuffed into a queue as the queue wait time goes up. And what did we have? Uh, wall clock plus queue wait. I think I already did. Lapse time. So this is just taking this, the wall clock, subtracting the service. Anything left over is an await time. And I'm seeing stuff in the uh, await time of five minutes or so. This would be CPU weight, memory weight, IO weight, trim weight, things that are part of the wall clock but not part of the CPU time. Okay. We do an ISAG. Oops, doesn't look like it's loaded. Boy. When I come into a system, I want to get a reference, a baseline, look at a big picture here. Okay. Here's the ISAG utility. Let me pick a uh, do the whole day. Let's go to yesterday. Huh. February 28th. So here I'm able to get into things and actually grab a slider that can allow me to zoom in a little bit better. Won't work on this one. Well, I guess it is working there. So I can drill down into the data. hard to see the colors here. This green is the system time, the red is the user time. Let's see what it's got for memory. Let's see, I'm still looking at the 28th here. That dark blue is just mem used. Not a whole lot of information there. Let me get out of there. I also want to go into var lib, I'm sorry, var log, ECP, EM logger, void one. So here's the PCP data that we've got. 27th is in there, 28th is in there. Hmm. I wonder what happened to Tuesday and Wednesday. I thought there'd be more data in there. However, it might be in this one here. So let me do a PM chart dash A on that particular file right here. Notice it says archive here. I'm going to click on this. Get a VCR controller up. Expecting one, it's not coming up right now. Let me open up a view here. I'm 
just looking to see if I had a. Uh, well, let me go in here. Uh, I'll hold it. Here we are. Here's one. Uh, doesn't like the per node stuff. The node numbering scheme probably is different, but I'm just going to cancel out of there. And bring up that time control. I was trying to get it with the uh, clicking down in the VCR controller, but now looking at this, it's starting on Tuesday, 5 in the morning, and going until about midnight on Tuesday. Oh, going a few minutes after midnight on Wednesday. I'm going to back this up again, so I've got the idea of the interval. Let me just put it into play here. I'm going to increase the speed here. I'm not actually seeing any data for some reason. At the time, I think all we had was the load level configured. There, we can start to see data here. There we are. Start about 11 in the morning, Egan time. One of the advantages of SPV would be to look at the entire file, and then you know uh, particular time windows that you're looking for. I'm more interested in things like the uh, system time going high and stuff. There is a uh, utility, let's see if it's, uh, EM Snap allows you to uh, generate GIF files out of the PCP data. I actually haven't used that in years because I use my SPV tool to look at the PCP data anyways. Okay, pretty quiet system. Let me just get out of there. Let me see what Floyd 2 looks like. Nothing happening there. Nothing really happening there. I expected the system to be pretty quiet. Nothing. Well, what do we got? We do have a little bit of I.O. going off to SDA. That's cat slash proc slash mem info. Under 31 gig of memory. Most of it is free. Buffer is about a gig. And again, my cache here is about 10 gig. Uh, a lot of it is inactive. Seven of the uh, seven gig of the ten gig is inactive, and it's inactive file. I do have uh, four gig that's actively being used. Almost five gig of page cache that appears to be active and still being used. No dirty, no write back. That's what I need to press on next. Process space real small. Shimam real small. Biggest thing here is a slab that is about three gig. Let me do a SAR DP. Everything is on SDA, it looks like. Let's do an LS L and Dev Shimam. Nothing of interest in there. Let's do a DU H and Dev Shimam. Nothing of interest there. 
IPCS-AM. And we do have a small unattached shared memory segment. It's not anything that I'd worry about. It's about 10 meg. But it is unattached. And my scratch file system, I do have 2 million inodes. Everything else is quite small. Okay. So A is pretty healthy, too. Not much going on there. Now, I don't think that I have any PBS data out here. I'm just going to get out of there. I didn't really think of it, but I forgot that Mike had installed uh, CSA accounting as well. I should go back to that. Let me go back to that just for a second here. So there was CSA data here. Let me do a uh, man on CSA.com. There's an option in here to print out anything that's over a given CPU time. Let me do a CSA com dash O. Let's go 10 seconds, anything that's over 10 seconds. And I can't see a whole bunch of code 2 MPs in there. Let me get rid of those. And I did have a find in here, a GNU and a code 2. Thought there'd be more data on this system. There's a second find in here as well. Look how long this find is taking and elapsed. Very little CPU time to it. Most of that is metadata IO8. Uh, I'm going to do a CSA run. And I think I want a dash capital A. Let me do a CSA run here. Dash capital A will say account for terminated and active jobs. Last time when I did this, I was only looking at terminated jobs. Okay. Uh, Mike had done the CSA lab and added a set command to see what the CSA run script was doing, which is just fine. And I got a clean completion. Go into var CSA. Let's go into the sum directory. I just got a report coming out of this. So more on that. So here I can see a uh, guest and the amount of C CPU time it used and root. A couple other things, man, PBS, and nobody. Nobody is what the find command is running under. The uh, locate utility is running a cron event as nobody. And top program, code2mp and MPI pong. Now, in a mindset of correlating to the customer, that would make sense. I mentioned that Code 2 is my bread and butter, and we also spent a lot of time on MPI Pong yesterday. I don't know what A.out is. There were 203 A.outs. I still see Pi Good, Pi Bad, Code 2 GNU, Code 4. Anything that ran only once is counted as other. There were 18 processes that were run only once. Run only once. And that's about it there. Okay, I'm wrapping up with a triage here. So let's just start off with SAR. Now about 3% IOA time again. Do a SAR dash Q. Do have my high load level still, 133. Star W. Look at contact switches. In the thousand contact switches per second range. I hadn't done, let me uh, get a baseline reference here. Remember the uh, SCED yields that we had and the context switching problem. OK, 
taking a little bit for the window manager to get started. Now, right now I know that there's a metadata load running in the background and that the bottleneck the uh, desktop was going through there was metadata, inodes, and directory type of stuff. So this system has been a little bit busier during the week than the other FOIDs, mostly because I've been stacking it up from the 22nd up through the 30th. Looks like IO wait time in the 20% range, system time. So here I'm seeing system time that might spike above 20%. I'll do something here. Since I'm in my baseline, I'm going to do a PMIE comp. Type in help. Type in rules. Here's my system time rule. Let me do a list of the rule. So saying if I have a threshold of 75%, I'm going to write into var log messages the fact that system time is high. Now let me try changing that. So I want to do a modify. And then the rule which was cpu.system. And then the variable and then the value. And the variable was the threshold. And I was going to drop it down to 30. Now if my system time goes above 30%, we're going to get a bar log message report. I'm just kind of looking up here. Let's quit out of here. Now watch when I quit. It's going to tell me that it just made changes to this file here. Let me do a more on that file. These are all the rules that the PM alarm is going to use. So here we're trying to say context switches. Looks like if I've got context switches greater than the number of CPUs times 4,000. I'm going to write in, a, this is the uh, action item. Anything to the right of that says if we match this rule, we've got a delta of two minutes. If I get, uh, let's just say it's a 10 CPU system, then I'd have uh, 40,000 context switches per second. If I get 40,000 context switches per second in the last two minutes, I'm going to write into syslog only once every 10 minutes the fact that I had a high context switch rate. We had the CPU load, and here's the system time saying if my system time is greater than 30%. And that is normalized to the number of CPUs on the system. So these are all the rules. Some of them I, I might actually want to uh, turn off. For example, if a CPU is busy, I don't necessarily want an alarm if we're greater than 90% busy on a CPU because I'd like the CPUs to be busy. Okay. So I kind of just set up a rule for that system time based upon what I saw there. So I had high... Uh, Load level, process switches, about a thousand. This system has more CPUs in it than the other, so it's going to have more kernel threads in it too. CPU subscription ratio, about the same, less than 1.5. And run queue length, I did get a high run queue length, but in general, 15. And this was a 64 CPU system, so I wasn't over committing anything. See if I got any PBS data here. No, no PBS data. Okay. I was looking at context switches when it went off to kind of get a baseline reference. Again, I can see typically 1,000, but it did get up to 21,000 at 520 in the morning. 
there was some sort of cron event there. I'm not going to go in and look at that more closely. So let's just see here, SAR was phase five. I kind of like to go back and see if I'm in the same, same state that I was a minute ago when I was looking. That all looks okay. Memory is 98% busy, and uh, I do see cached here. 179 gig is in the cache field. Not too big in the buffers. I'm going to have to pull this cache field apart, but let me do a SAR dash DP, one space five first. Now, one of the things I like to do here, when I'm looking at disk, let me just do a SAR dash DP. I'm going to pipe it into AUK. I wish that SAR had an option to say, only print things above a certain threshold. But I don't have that option here. I'm going to do an AUK. If, let's see, so I've got columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 11, it looks like. So I'm counting again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Column 11 is the busy. So let's just say if. Dollar eleven is greater than thirty percent. Print the line. So I'm just putting a filter here, and let's see if we get out of this. Okay. First of all, I got some corrupted data here. I've overrun some numbers that are available there. Uh, was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? I'm not sure what happened here. I said anything greater than thirty, but I was getting more than that. something wrong with my sort here. I'm going to have to come back to that. I was trying to get a reference here, but filter out the noise. There was something that happened here. Basically, we've overflowed here. Something about 7 o'clock this morning. So I'm having trouble being able to look at a large disk farm and filter the data. SDI and SDE have big problems. Let's see, SDA, not too bad as an average since the beginning of the day. My rule of thumb, though, I'd like these to be less than 60. I'm not sure I like a root that's got average eye wait times of 34 milliseconds. Okay. Star dash R one space five was my memory. We were looking at that. Most of it was the cached field. So let's cat my slash proc mem info. So what we got here? About three gig that's free on the system on a 264 gig machine. None of it is raw I.O. Cached is only 16 gig of the 260 gig. 
Uh, most of the memory well, is inactive, and most of it is inactive file. So BC free might free that up. Do have a little bit out of swap, but nothing. Oh, I do have a lot of dirty here. I got two gig of dirty data sitting here. And the biggest thing I have is a slab. 195 gig in my slab. That's going to create some problems here. No NFS traffic. So I've got that dirty going on. Let me do a uh, top disk. So CPUs were healthy here. Memory was mostly busy. Most of memory is my slab. I do see I.O. and write, so that dirty data it looks like it's going to SDE, SDI. And I had an NMON. Dash G. Oops. Oh, okay. Let me copy home guest bin. Oh, let's just copy it all into here. Now, while that's happening, let me bring up PCP. that all tab that I was using on the other system. Let me get to Floyd 3 here. a whole lot of CPUs. There is a little bit out of swap. 350 meg it looks like. Again, most of my memory is other. I do see the IO operations going off here. And I do have one policy that's about 40% full. I'm not going to worry about that. Here's my CPU utilization. Oh, there's a little bit of system time that just happened. Load average still about 140 Number of processes, end proc size of the process table, about 1,000. Now, here I'm actually looking at system time on a per CPU basis. And lastly, my context switches. I do see something kicking off right now. I have some system time. The system time is going up here as well. And context switches associated with it. Let's bring up top here, see if I can catch what's going on. So I am seeing a fine command. I am seeing a lot of metadata going on here. And then I've got a whole bunch of code fives. Oh, these context switches. Oh, it's kind of gone down now. Looks like my system time has gone down here as well. And my context switches are down. I wanted to see what was driving the context switches what that system time was, but it's too late right now. Let's see if we got a pattern here. Let's see what else is going on during that interval. Most of my memory is the slab. That's not so good. I've got an event occurring right here. Just wondering if I had trims or anything like that going on. My dirty data is pretty consistent at 2 gig dirty. I'm not sure I like that. Do we got any flushing going on? You can see occasional flushes. 
and we do have constant disk activity. There we can see a correlation with the system time to something that was a write going on. I'm kind of waiting for that to happen again. So one of our CPUs just finished up some system time. Shamam, I got no Shamam. Not a big issue here. Numalink traffic, I am tracking. So here was that high system time event that we had. I'm just kind of hoping to see another one happen here. So I'm trying to catch and correlate an event with that system time to find out what it was, whether it was related to the metadata I have or a flush that happened. Do IPCS dash. So I do have unattached shared memory segments here as well. In fact, it looks like I do have a problem related to them. Because I've run out of shared memory segments. Let me get rid of those unattached shared memory segments. There's lots of small ones, so it only showed up as total number of shared memory segments. Oh, we're in a system time. Let's see. It might be related. Oh, there we go. That system time is related to a flush. This is the major minor number, but we know that that's the XVM file system. Okay, that flush finished, and the system time went away. What's the time window between these? 7.30, 7.34. I was looking to see if I can get an actual time when these actually kicked off. Looks like about every three minutes. Did I catch that? Here's the shemem that I'm tr trimming with that clear shemem right now. Let me look at memory, get rid of memory. There was a little trim that happened there. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of dirty data that got trimmed here. I saw that system time come in, I see a whole bunch of writes happening, but I really don't see anything that got smaller. The dirty, I got a bump here, but that was more related to the Shemem. And I'm trying to find the correlation here. So that traffic there appears to be a flush. I'm not seeing anything actually change in my memory footprint. I'm wondering if the flushing is being aggressive enough. I'll check something here. So I should start flushing when I'm 10% dirty or 30 seconds old. Once I get to 40% dirty, my processes will go to sleep. I no longer do delayed write allocation, and everything goes to sleep on an IO wait. But those are all default. So uh, 256 gig machine, that means about 25 gig before I start flushing. So I'm taking 10% of the 256 gig. And this 2 gig is below the 
we're below, I'm not 30%, but 10%. We're below dirty background ratio, so we shouldn't necessarily be doing much flushing, except by age. The flush by age looked like it was about three minutes apart, not 30 seconds. This is in milliseconds, so that's, or centiseconds, I mean. So that's 30 seconds right there. Okay, we're in another event here. So all this XFS AIL. AIL stands for an action item list. This is where the journaling activity for the metadata has made it to the disks on disk journal, on disk log, but the metadata itself has not been flushed yet. Metadata is flushed after like 30 seconds. That again tells me I got heavy metadata. I just want to do something here. I'm going to open up another tab. I'll go to the XFS statistics. In particular, I'm interested in the log statistics. I'm not actually sure I want to put them all on one chart, but I'm going to do that right now. Does, that metric's not compatible with the other plots, so I can just leave that alone. Then we had uh, directory operations. Actually, let me just do these. And then do the inodes. So because everything I see in the system is the slab, and we've got heavy metadata activity going on. I'm looking at the XFS statistics here. I'm interested in that flushing that we're seeing and the dirty data that we're seeing as well. Okay. So I do have one here that's way out of range from the others, if I can find it. No, nope, not that one. This uh, long tail push AIL push buff is the one that I'm seeing here. Let me just keep that out. Okay. So here was a, another system time event. I can see it here. Context switch is correlating to it. I see the system time. Now, when that whole thing's done, there's still one CPU, CPU zero, that's still got other stuff going on. We're still got a little bit more system time. Notice that system time kind of goes away in the end. See what's going on with that CPU. Okay. I do see a code five on CPU zero. And it just went away on that particular CPU. Since that's system time, I think this time I'm going to try 
it with a uh, Topsis. Now I'm going to catch it. I'm just curious about the what's going on on CPU zero after this uh, flush is done. So this is the flush, and we can see it with the disk activity writing as it's flushing. And it appears the flush has to do with uh, directory. Is this a direct correlation here? Let's see. It looks like they are correlated. Might be useful for me to put system time up on this particular chart here. Waiting for the next event here. I'm curious about the time window between this one and this one. We have a periodic flush occurring. Still seeing about a three minute window between them. So we should be there we are, we started in the next flush. Watching the flush, CPU forty five. Again, I'm interested in what's going on with CPU zero, this this tailing piece after the flush demons get done. So we should see the flush demon go away here in a sec. And now we're into, oh, there's a migration thread running. Migration thread. Well, that migration thread, however, is on CPU zero. I got a thread, a worker thread here running on CPU zero. Waiting for that system time to go away. Again, I'm trying to correlate what's going on with this little yellow thing up here. System time on CPU zero. But I'm seeing CPU two being busy from that migration thread and then a K worker thread, interrupt handler thread on zero. Let's see. Migration thread still there. Waiting for that system time to go away and then spot the difference here. So I got that AFS AILD and migration, and we should about be finished now. Migration thread is gone, and so is the system time. We do still have the XFS AIL daemon running, so it looks like that particular thing has to do with the migration thread and possibly page migration. That makes me wonder here. I want to look at the VM stat statistics. In particular, I'm going to look for compaction. The mem group, VM stat. Here's my compaction group. I'm wondering if that migration thread has to do with compaction or garbage collection of my memory. I do have a large slab. I'm waiting for the next event to come up. Could be happening any second here. There, it's just starting now. now it's a flush going on right now. And what I'm interested in was that migration thread popping up. Waiting for that flush to finish, and then right after the flush is finishing, and we're into the migration thread now, but no compaction. Okay, so that migration thread is not related to any sort of memory compaction or garbage collection of the large slab. I'm 
going to try something else here now. Perf record dash A dash G. I want to wait for this event to get into that state again. I see a little bit of IOA time in there right now, which I wasn't seeing before. We are still in that uh, migration thread happening, I guess. Let me see if I can catch it here. Just going to wait for the uh, system time to go down. We did directly correlate that to being this migration thread. Now, the migration thread is doing page migration and uh, some CPU migration, but compaction is not causing the pages to be shuffled. So now I want to find out what how we're getting into that migration thread, see if we can spot it in the uh, traceback. So I started profiling after the system time flush event. Could be wrapping up here. This one's taking a little bit longer to actually get done. There we are. We're done. That one did take a little bit longer for whatever it was doing. Let me break out of here. See what we got. So there's all that XFS AIL stuff, looking for XFS buffers, dealing with some inodes. I'm not sure I can see the uh, migration thread. That's what was interesting to me. Let me do a uh, E to expand. So it is all dealing with inodes here. Journaling activity for XFS. But I was interested in how I got into that migration thread. I might have to uh, actually go to CPU zero next time. Let's do it that way. That migration thread I was seeing on CPU two, not zero, and zero is the one that I pretty sure zero is the one that I got my high system time on. Yep, there it is. So we're gonna do another event. I'm trying to find two things, what that system time is. Let's do a perf record. Should be in, yeah, we are now into that after event. Or is it big C? But I'm looking at just zero. Oh, and look, now it changed to a different node, it bounced to a different node. Once I tried to look at it, it was on node five now. Oh, I've been confused here. These were per node CPU system times, not per CPU. So that would correlate to that migration thread. We're in there right now, but this time it's on note five. Let's see if I can catch that again. Top. It bounced. Let's see. Do I have CPUs in there? No. So when I tried to look at it, it looks like it pushed it off to a different CPU. Uh, 
I'm not seeing the uh, migration thread this time. Or if I do a top sys. And I'm trying to find out what this trailing effect is after the flush. And it does still look like the main thing would be this XFS AIL demon, which we were seeing before. So all this system time does appear to be metadata. There we're getting those migration threads that I was talking about. And an interrupt handler thread. But it still looks like the dominant thing is this XFS AIL demon. And looking to see if I can correlate it to, to, to anything. We'll wait for this one last event here. Waiting for the system time to finish. System time should be kicking up here. By the way, this time, that system time I see here does correlate to a trim of the dirty. We got about one gig that got flushed during that event. Here's our next flush starting. There's the flush demon flushing it. It's on CPU 41. Again, it looks like we're spread across multiple CPUs. Uh, there's that migration thread we were talking about. So I'm, I'm now into that state that we were trying to narrow down. Just trying to find something else that's correlating to it. So we can see where uh, some transactions uh, journaling was flushed in there. I'm seeing that migration thread in there still. This time it's on CPU 22. See if I can catch that. And hope it doesn't bounce because I've attached to it. Waiting for it to finish. That's looking like it was CPU 23, not CPU 22, that the system time was on. It just kind of bounced around on several CPUs. There, we've got a whole burst of system time. Am I 
seeing it right. I'm seeing system time here, but I don't know why I'm not seeing it. There, we can see it here. Break out of here. Didn't catch anything out of that. Okay. Either attached to the wrong CPU. It did look like CPU 23 for a while. Once I attached to it, it looks like it moved it. Uh, we try a perf top. I'm just trying to understand the metadata activity that's happening after the flush. About ready for a break here. Okay, so we're into that high system time. Not seeing a whole lot here. See a little bit of raw spin lock. Find busiest group. Again, this is looking at the whole system where I've only got one CPU right now. That's my problem. This isn't really helping me here. Another thing I can do, let me try copying slash, oh, copy slash proc slash sked underscore debug. Uh, I might have just missed it. One thing that I can do is look at the uh, run queue for each CPU. Let me wait for the next one again. So you can see the flushing of the journaling activity here, but we're not we're still not really seeing what's going on after that. I'm trying to understand this one thread, this look like a K worker thread or a migration thread that's doing stuff after the flush is done. That's what I'm trying to understand. to put everything on one page because you can lose important stuff that might be in the 10 range to things that are in the 1,000 range. Let's copy that thing here. Take a look at it. So I'm interested more likely in the later CPUs. Well, here I was able to see myself. Here's the copy command, copying the uh, SCED debug. GNOME terminal. 
By the way, when you have that high contact switching, there is a feel here for contact switches. Well, when I snapshot, I don't see anything else on the run queues. Oh, what was that one? XVNC, that was Ronnie. Nope, I didn't get anything out of there. Don't know if I snapshotted it wrong or what. Okay, we're into the next one. Again, a few more minutes. I'm trying to figure out what this dangling thread here is. It looked like K worker migration thread or the AIL daemon. Okay, the initial flushing is done. I can see the whole bunch of uh, page scans going on there. So we have page scans and flushes going on. There's my system time that I'm trying to correlate to. Can't see anything there. Those are the trims and the page deals. Uh, not seeing anything else that can correlate to it. Okay, so we're into a flush. There's the flush demon. done. Again, I tried to narrow down to a CPU and then I didn't see anything. So let me just wait for this one system time event to finish, look at it, and then we'll take a break. color is that CPU line supposed to be? The red or the brown? Looks like a brown, which is Node 5 right now. Yeah, okay. Again, I was trying to get the actual CPU rather than the node, but for this one I was plotting by node. So I'm just trying to understand the behavior here. I know I got metadata going on and I this flushing makes sense but then we've got something going on right now I'm just going to try to wait until this is finished and again this time it's still the XFS AIL demon that appears to be the main thing
But I've seen the migration thread before. That's what's uh, what I'm wondering about. Well, that CPU 22 is on that node 5, isn't it? Yes. So that AILD there is candidate. Yes, it is. It is. But we also had that running during the first part. And I was seeing, my question was I was seeing a K worker and I was seeing migration. And I'm not sure what the migration threads were doing. That looks good enough for this. Let's break out of there and just see what we got. just trying to catch to understand what that last little piece was. Now we're only talking about 1%. I was just trying to see if I can identify what that system time was. And it's still looking again like the AIL demon. Again, during that whole interview, it looks like a lot of that was a K MAM zone ALEC. Let me do an expansion here. So we're seeing that K worker thread, the kernel thread helper, come in here. It is managing the cache, so there is a most recently used cache delete. And that appears to be the main thing that we're seeing there. So after we might the plug, a big number of like yes, I know in the slab top if it's allocating new ones and copying them. Well, this, yeah, but this this is a managing of that cache, but this is a we are allocating. So this is a zone allocate, yes. But at the I'm top, not, we're doing a conversion up on the more CPU on the bigger cycles. Right. So we allocating one, converting it, and putting it in the new one. I know the item convert. Yeah, I have to look to see what that is. I, I agree with what you're saying. We are doing some sort of uh, XFS uh, cache management here, indicating that we're doing some sort of inode management, and that we're allocating. This is allocating in the slab. I'd have to go into the kernel to figure out what that routine is because I'm not on top of what that one is. Anyway, I was just trying to see what was going on here. Why don't we? I was more interested in finding out what that migration thread is for, why that's coming in, but I'm not seeing that. Let's take a 15-minute uh, break, come back at 25 after. We'll move forward. Okay, so okay. we'll see you in 15 minutes.